Hello everybody and welcome back to Shadowrun Dragonfall. It has once again been a very long time since I was here. Uh, still dealing with that kidney stone, which is just, you know, two thumbs up. It's It's been wreaking havoc on my uh, body, so that's great. <laughs> I don't... Having to, having to go back and forth from the hospital when they don't know, like, when they, they can't be speedy about anything is just the best. Um, so let's go... Hi, guys. You're not going to attack us, right? As you kick the door open and stumble forward into the room, you find yourself surrounded by a sea of teenage faces. Initiates and acolytes huddled together and trembling with the spirit's influence cleared from their minds, their swagger is gone. They look frightened and lost, like kids who've had their security blankets torn away. Gl uh, Glory? Is... is that you? The acolyte's in his early twenties, close to Glory's age. His eyes are wide with astonishment. You don't know me, but... but I was a new initiate back when you lived here. When you were... She cuts in, but her voice is gentle. Yes, it's me. Come on, we're taking you to safety, someplace far away from here. A scrawny teenager in a ratty coat stares at Glory's chrome, his mouth hanging slack. His voice cracks when he speaks. What happened to you? Your arms? Something you'll never need to worry about. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Couldn't have put it better myself. Come on, people, we're taking you someplace safe. Let's go. Da-da-da-da! Oh, was that? Okay. You thread your way through the trees of the Shonbuk forest, tracing your way back to the thicket where you and Glory hid the van. The inferno that consumed Firestell is spreading, and the conflagration casts the forest around you in a sinister orange light. The heat at your back is intense. Unbearable, far ahead. Oh, unbearable. Far ahead, Glory blazes a trail for you to follow, shredding the foliage in her path. The liberated in initiates teeter on the edge of panic as they struggle to keep pace behind you. The fire is moving fast, but you're faster. As Glory helps the last of the kids into the van, you put the vehicle in gear and punch the accelerator. The bur burning ruin of fire still recedes into the distance, a glowing speck in the rearview mirror. The peace and safety of the cruise bazaar lie ahead. Hey... What do we need to do after this? Talk to Dietrich again? See if we have a mission with him or anything? Is that... I think that's it, basically. I mean, we talk to Glory, obviously. Uh, figure out what's what's up with her now that she has this demon deer inside of her. <laughs> uh, hi. Hi. Glory stands, an introspective look on her face. At the sound of your approach, she turns to face you. She nods at you. Thank you for your help with Firestone. I couldn't have done it without you. Been meaning to talk with you, but uh, after the things we saw in there, I'm not surprised. Go ahead, Kira. I'm listening. Uh, you looked distraught when Marta died. Her expression clouds, as well as can be expected. My feelings on this are complicated. Uh, but, uh, you loved her, that much is pretty clear. Um, yes, a part of me still loved her, and the rest hated her for what she represented. And I, am I ultimately sorry that she's dead? Yes, but I'm not sure what the alternative would be. Say nothing. Marta was a new definition of the term damaged goods. I can't even imagine the amount of psychological trauma she'd be carrying if she were alive today. It'd take her years to recover, and in that time, she'd still be dangerous. All in all, it's probably better that things turned out the way they did. That's what I keep telling myself, anyway. Harrow got away just like you said he would. She frowns. Yes, and he's already putting distance between himself and the Seanbook Forest. Um, how do you want to go about checking him? Finding Harrow is going to be a full-time job. I can't track him down while we still have a great dragon hanging over our heads. After we've dealt with Valclair and the Firewing, I'll devote myself wholeheartedly to finding that bastard and finishing this. But for now, we need to keep our eyes on the road ahead. What'd you wind up doing to the cultists? No, he has enough to worry about keeping the people of the Cruise Bazaar safe. 
Those kids that we rescued, they've been damaged by Harrow's philosophies. They can get better, but it's going to take time. Trying to integrate them into our society too quickly would be dangerous. So where did they go? I took them to the talismonger, Algernon. He said that he knew a place where they could get help. It won't be easy for them, or quick, but they'll get better in time. Thanks for taking the time. Any time, Kira, and thanks again. I mean that. Is that... We're not gonna talk about your... Okay. Well, I guess there was an achievement for that, so that's... Cool. We're not gonna... <laughs> I'm not going to... Oh, oh, all right. At the sound of your approach, Blitz stubs out a cigarette. He gives you a curt nod. nod. Kira, I'd offer you smoke, but... Smoke, but that was my last one. How'd that whole Emily situation work out? Yeah, well, sort of. It's mostly speculation, truth be told. I'll get on with it. After our talk, I went waiting into all the as technology matrix hubs I could find. Nothing too deep, don't worry, I didn't want to set off any alarm bells. But I had a hunch that if I poked around long enough, I'd find something that might lead me to Emily. And sure enough, I did. A message from the genuine article herself. Nicely done. His face brightens. <laughs> thanks, Chief. Always good to get a little recognition for my work. Um, I can uh, I can tell you what her note said if you want. I It said... Uh, layoff, Blitz. I told you to leave me alone. You've shown Admiral self-control over the past year. Don't give up on it now. I'll be back when I can, if I can. Until then, keep away from me for both of our sakes. So, uh, I found her. And she wants nothing to do with me. Again. No explanations, no apologies, just a verbal pat on the head. I've shown admirable self-control? Really? She makes it sound like I'm a toddler or something. So, did you lay off? Hell no! I wasn't gonna stand for that. Where'd she get off stealing from me and then acting like it was my fault? I tried to trace the message, like any good Decker would. I note your use of the word. I tried. Ugh, she's good, Kira. Better than I ever thought she was. I couldn't trace a damn thing. I could keep digging, though. I mean, if she noticed me doing it before, I must have been close. Now, before you say anything, I was more discreet this time. I can be subtle if I have to. Nobody knows what I was doing, and I did find another clue. I hesitate to ask. That's okay, I'll tell you anyway. I found a connection between Emily and Seda Krupp. So you think she works for SK, then? That she stole the encrypted data from you to give to them? Maybe. I, I don't know. It's confusing. I was also able to track down some message fragments connecting her to the shock villain rider. So maybe she was a Seda Krupp mole, and she got close to me so she could... I don't know, profit from my decking expertise? Maybe when she told me not to steal that data, she was using reverse psychology. That's That's got a bit. Be it? She must have wanted me to take it. Nah. Then again, maybe she's with a shock villain rider, and she's screwing both the Azzies and SK over. If that's the case, then maybe she was with me because she genuinely wanted to be. He pauses for a moment, considering. All at once, he seems to perk up. His chest puffs out, and he nods once, decisively. In either case, I should make an effort to find her. I mean, she's playing a dangerous game, whether she's with SK or the shock villain rider. Maybe she's gotten herself in too deep. She might need help. I mean, why else would she send me such a cryptic message? The message was anything but cryptic. Uh, you kind of do whatever you want to do anyway. Um... It's up to you, Blitz. Yeah. He nods excitedly. If, if he caught the dismissive tone of your words, he doesn't show it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is up to me. It's up to me to save the woman I love. Blitz claps his hands and rubs them together in excitement. Get set, Chief. You're about to witness an event. When my gung-ho personality and legendary skills come together, the whole world stops and takes notice. Uh, decking level 5. I'll give you a hand. If this is as serious as it sounds, you're gonna need help. No, thanks, Chief. I appreciate it, though. This is something I need to do alone. Besides which, I'm the best, remember? I know just the place to hit. That same as technology data node I stole the information from in the first place. I don't know I can get past the security, and my gut tells me I'll find Emily there. Thanks for the encouragement, Chief. I know this was the right thing to do, of course, but you've helped to quiet any lingering doubts I might have had. He nods at you. Expression of supreme confidence on his face. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a damsel in distress to rescue. Um. 
Sure. Okay. I have a, I have a feeling that could go wrong, but okay. <laughs> what you need, boss? Uh, nothing. No, nothing. Okay. Um, is that everything? Uh, no talking to Glory. No talking to Iger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that was fast. Blitz looks grim. His customary table is littered with cigarette butts, and the heavy bags under his eyes tells you he hasn't slept in a while. Aha. Uh -huh. Akira. You don't look so good. No, I imagine I don't. I'm guessing the rescue attempt didn't go so well. No, it did not. As it turns out, she didn't need to be rescued. At least not before I showed up. I don't really want to go into this, Chief. Here's the abridged version. I've made a mess of things. I, th that's the abridged version, but okay. With your world-class skills? However could that have happened? I don't know, Chief. I had the data know, just like last time. Just like last time, navigating it was a breeze. At least it wasn't me. He did this very fast. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. Because they want you to be able to get through, like... Like, in Mass Effect, you know, with the the companion storylines, you can miss stuff if you don't talk to them in, like, the proper amount of time. Like, if you wait too long, then you just, you don't have enough time to talk to everybody, because you can't just spam conversations. Uh, but, yeah, it it's a little bit jarring. All right. As you must have buffed up their security in the past year that you don't say. That really shouldn't have come as a surprise. He shakes his head, a miserable expression on his face. It was all going so well. I guess I must have tripped something. In the blink of, an eye, blink of an eye, there were alarms going off. I had black ice bearing down on me from all directions. thought I was a dead man. How'd you make it out? Well, uh, M found me, and she rescued me. I'd have been ecstatic to see her if I wasn't so ashamed. She didn't look particularly happy either. That's... <laughs> Did she make it out okay, too? I mean, last I saw of Emily, she was being chased down by the black ice. They'd gotten a trace on her. She must have jacked out, because she just disappeared. She looked really, really angry. Livid would probably be a better word. That's about it. She's gone. He looks down into the cup of soy calf in his hands. I don't know if I'll ever hear from her again. Uh... Hey, she's still alive. She might come around. Uh, stop being so doom and gloom. <laughs> uh, she'll come back to you. Just wait and see. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Cheerful tone chirps out from the terminal on Blitz's table. He jerks up in surprise and hurriedly turns to read the message on the screen. As he mouths the words, you can see the hope on his face flicker and die. If anything, he looks even more miserable than he did before. Let me guess. Bad news. He glances at you with red-rimmed eyes and averts his gaze. Without a word, he turns to the terminal so you can read the message on the screen. Congratulations, Jackass. You've managed to blow an op five years in the making and endanger Emily's life all in one fell swoop. Thanks to you, we're going to have to work very hard to keep your ex alive. Don't bother looking for her again. She's being moved somewhere very, very far away. She never wants to speak with you again, by the way. Idiot. Freedom. Equality. Information. Shock villain writer. He clamshells the terminal closed and then puts his head in his hands. Uh, this is my fault. This is, I, mm. At least you know she was working with the shock villain writer? His reply is dull and flat. Somehow that's not a consolation. No, I guess not. Chief, let me ask you something. Did you suspect that something like this was going to happen? When you let me go in there, did you know I was going to fuck it up somehow? Uh... I can see this train wreck coming from a mile away. Uh, no, of course not. How could I? I don't know. I guess... I guess I'm just on edge right now. Um... I mean, no, I did help. 
Uh, you need a lesson in humility. Having Emily out of your life is a good thing. From what you described, it sounds like your relationship with her was a pretty toxic one. Um, no, I mean, like, I, I encouraged him the full way, so I shouldn't say that. Uh, <sighs> Alright, we're gonna go... <laughs> we're gonna go accuse them of having a toxic relationship. You don't know what you're talking about, Chief. You never even met her. I don't have to. <laughs> Come on, Blitz. She's robbed you, insulted you, and abandoned you. If she, if she could have avoided all of this and protected her oh-so-secret mission if she'd communicated with you a little better. Uh... Mm, communication. She left me notes. Yeah, inflam inflammatory notes that provided almost no useful information. Look, you made your fair share of mistakes, but no more than she did. He hangs his head. I don't know. Maybe I still love her, though. That's something you'll have to work out for yourself. Go ahead and cry this out. That's something you'll have to work out for yourself. I'll give you some space and leave you to it. Yeah, thanks, Chief. I got some thinking to do. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Um, hey, chief. No, all right, so that's, uh, that's, well, I never got any, like, achievements for Dietrich or, uh, Iger, though, so, why, I don't, all right, well, okay. I guess we're just heading off to this, uh, like, all we have left to do now is that one, one more mission, um, and, yeah, because we don't have, don't really have any cash, don't really, don't have a fixer to get us any other runs, don't have... I'm not sure we have anything, to be honest. <laughs> So, um, yeah, travel to the coordinates that Alice provided to find a backdoor access point and shut down the Apex AI. This is all we really, oh, we can bring, we can bring the dog. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Um, creature, crew, dog. Um, oh, jeez. Jeez, okay. Who do we want to bring? Well, might go with just the classic Gloria Iger and Dietrich. Uh, if we get. Uh, like, if we could have five people on the team at a time, that would be fantastic. Like, oh, it would be lovely to, uh, have, to have Blitz as well, or even the dog, like, have dog, hello dog, but, um, yeah, we'll just go with the, we'll go with the classic, I think I probably should have maybe gone to the equipment locker before traveling off here, but, um, <sighs> Apex Rising. Apex, an artificial intelligence designed for matrix warfare. The thought of it sends a chill down your spine. For years, the shadows have been ripe with rumors of true AI. Names like Mirage and Psychotrope have fueled conspiracy boards on the Shadowland BBS since 2029. Most savvy Shadowrunners dismiss these stories as bunk, but from what Alice has told you, at least one of the stories is real. Apex is waiting for you, somewhere down in the basement of an abandoned Seder Group lab. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wade through a lot of gang territory to get there. So apparently, one thing I need to, one thing about this mission is that there's a bug in it, whereby, uh, it's very easy if you save the game at the wrong time, um, it's very easy to break the entire game. And that's 
<laughs> that doesn't sound good to me. Um, I'll give you a med kit. Uh, I'll give you a hyper as well. Do you want to give you any? Eh, bleh. Oh, 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 jeez. Okay. Um, I mean, we could give... Give Iger a grenade launcher. <laughs> Couldn't we? No. We can. Yeah, okay. Um, it's not really better than anything she's got, though. Just give Glory the grenade launcher for the laughs. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Confirm. Let's go. So yeah, apparently, like, after a certain point in this mission, uh, you, if you save the game, or, like, maybe if, maybe it's just quick saving, I don't know, but, uh, it just breaks the game. And that's worrying to me. Do we want to get another charisma? Do we want to... We have gang, but maybe get street. I mean, of course, the thing is, it's gonna have been enough uh, street. Like, we're, we'll have. It'll be too late to use the street charisma now because we'll have already gone through all the places that require it um, or use it. Uh, maybe I should just get more body. I don't know. Uh, more health points is not a bad idea, but, mm, all right, well, we're gonna, gonna hope this doesn't break on us, hope that we didn't waste our, uh, let's create a new save, actually, for this, uh, ba -da -ba -da. hi there, Ulrich. Also, all these locked, contained... Wow, that's a lot of... Yeah, all right. A huge orc in ragged combat fatigue steps forward to meet you. He walks with the swollen bravado of a man who's used to getting what he wants. One of his meaty arms jerks up, hand held upright, and a universal sign for stop. The other clutches a bulky assault rifle. The orc inspects you. His body language is decidedly unfriendly. You don't look like a magnificer. You're not one of us. And I'm guessing you ain't here for the hub either. So tell me, who are you and what's your interest in this building? Um, actually, I'm here for the hub. I need to get into the basement. Oh, it's important, you say. He makes a sweeping gesture in the direction of the building behind him. The other sort of tufts behind him smile. Well, by all means, go on in then. You're being sarcastic. Ha! <laughs> You're a sharp one. He smiles at you, revealing a mouth filled with jagged teeth. The building is under Arbiter protection. We can't just let you waltz in and shoot up the place. I'm not planning on shooting anything. Yeah, well, I can't exactly take that at face value. Look, it'd be better for everyone if you just heard back. We don't want to fight you, but we can't risk letting an unknown player into this... situation right now. Maybe I can help you out with your situation. Well, that puts a different spin on things. You look like you can handle yourself. We could probably use you if you'd be willing to help. There'd even be some money in it for you. But if not, well... That's a different conversation. And what exactly do you want us to do? Iger's tone is neutral. Third... I'm sorry, orcs and trolls and other sort of fantasy creatures you get very similar voices because I'm not I <laughs> one of her hands is casually comes to rest on the rest on the butt of her shotgun Ur Ulrich doesn't seem to notice we're having some trouble with a local mage gang the Magnificers the orc turns his head and spits and they attacked us without warning took up in our building and kicked us onto the street me and my boys were the rightful protectors of this block but the assholes that screwed us had got the building buttoned up pretty tight. We can't get get in there to make things right, but maybe you can. 
If you could enter the building and do some damage to those dracating magnificers, the arbiters would be willing to pay you. 200 new yen per kill. You bring me back their ambulance, you get paid. How's that sound? Iger raises an eyebrow. You're, you're a call, fearless leader. You know the timetable we're working on. Uh, looks like you need my help. And that tells me you can do better. Fine, 250 per head. But that's my final offer. Works for me. Edgar gives you a small nod. Her hand falls away from the stock of the, the stock of her shotgun. You need anything else, or are you ready to go crack some skulls? Want to know who I'm work? Um, tell me about the Magnificers, a gang of parasites. They think their magical talents make them better than everyone else. Because of that, they feel entitled to take whatever they want. Up until recently, they've been content with pulling pranks and stealing purses. Childish dreck that they were basically harmless. And then their new leader took over, calls himself Trithemius, but I remember when he was just a skinny little prick named Yuri. <sighs> I should have kept a better eye on him, I guess. Should have stomped him flat when he started putting on airs. Would have saved everyone a heap of trouble. Trithemius took over the Magnificers, militarized them, convinced them they could take us. Thanks to the element of surprise, they actually managed to do it. York folds his arms across his burly chest. Any day now, we're going to show him exactly how bad an idea that was. I think I'll start by breaking Yuri's neck. Mm, I want to know who I'm working for. I'm Ulrich, leader of the Berlin chapter of the Arbiters. We're a poly club. Small, but growing. We serve the people of the working class. Protect them from the parasites that would exploit them. You're not a fan of the F-State, then. Anarchy is not the solution to the people's problems. Do what thou wilt is a policy that rewards only the powerful. The working class get trampled. A strong, people-centered, communist movement is the only way to protect the interests of the common man. Give us a few years, and that's exactly what we're gonna be. Um, how long do you intend to man the trenches? We'll be out here as long as it takes. We're taking our building back one way or another. For over three years, we protected that place. We held it for the people to do with as they pleased. Kept it safe from parasites and exploiters. Are you... Anybody who uses parasites like that just reminds me of Andrew Ryan. I'm sorry. Everything was cool until those Drixow Magnificers sucker punched us. No negotiation, no warning. They just turned on us out of the blue. Brought a couple dozen spirits down on our heads. I didn't even know we were under attack until the water in my bathtub snaked up and tried to drown me. Most of us got out alive, but we can, we've been stuck out here ever since. Give us some time, though. We'll take the building back. We'll starve them out if we have to. And when we do, those scrawny bastards are gonna pay. Anything I should know about the building? You'll probably see some burnouts floating around the ground floor. They're all there for the hub. It's like some kind of church or something. A guy called Parson runs it. Between you and me, they're all batshit crazy. Not dangerous, just nuts. Why'd you keep them around at all then? Because a lot of them are rich. They paid a direct load of rent, and we redistributed that wealth to the common man. Let me guess, you define yourselves as the common man. Do you see a tire on my neck, pal? Do I look like a corporate stooge to you? We're the friends of the people. We are the people. Don't you dare question it. I need to get in the basement. Anything you can do that help me out? Basement? What could you possibly want to go down there for? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. You'd be surprised what I'll believe. Try me. I need to stop a killer AI so that I can rescue an elderly scientist from a ghost dragon. The future of Berlin could be at stake. You're right. I don't believe you. You're either lying or crazy. But crazy has its uses. Alright, I'll get you into that basement. But it'll cost you. Yeah, of course it will. <laughs> Another Bush League extortionist trying to milk us for cash. You got the wrong idea. I don't need New York friend. What I need is Trithemius' head on a fucking platter. Problem is, he's holed up somewhere in the building and we don't know where. Best guess, he's hiding somewhere upstairs in a room with no exterior windows. Somewhere, probably someplace close. He stashed a power coupling for the elevator and pulled it to the keep us from getting access to the guns we stashed in the basement. So you find and kill Trithemius. Grab the coupling out of his apartment. Please. Ooh. 
and bring me that stupid amulet he's always wearing so I'll know he's dead. He cracks his grin. Then I'll give you the control chip that I pulled when we had to fall back. Slot them both back into the elevator and it'll take you straight to the basement. Uh... <laughs> Gang etiquette. Deal's coming out all in your favor. If I'm gonna hand you your entire territory back, you'll have to sweeten the pot. He shrugs. You got a point there. I'll tell you what. Like I said, we had a bunch of weapons stashed in the basement before the Magnificus showed up. You take care of Trithemius, I'll let you have your pick of the armory. Whatever piece of hardware you want. One dead mage coming right up. Good. Just remember, no amulet, no basement. Now go on through and show them a little prick what it means to screw with the Arbiters. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay. So we have two doors that both lead to the front entrance, quote unquote. Um. Okay. Well, we are going to call it here, and then when we come back next time, we're going to go inside there and uh, see how many mages we have to kill, see how much money we can get. I don't know. Should be exciting. Mages are not quite as bad to fight in this game as they are in like Dragon Age Origins, so that's okay. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye!